Hey folks, Tack with AOK Foraging and Adventures here with a little adventure. Uh, I am I had a live stream not too long ago on my Talk with Tack Tuesday about hunting. And well, I'm going to take you and show you uh, um, me setting up my hunting blind, why I do what I do and stuff like that. So come back and let's go set it up. Alright guys, so I'm on my way to where I usually set up. I'm going to zoom in from back here and show you why I always usually set up at the base of that tree right there. Now, it will help me keep, keep my blind somewhat camouflaged and I will have a very nice view. The only problem is if they come in behind me, but if they come in behind me then I can always open my back blind and take a check. Normally, I have scouted and hunted this part enough to know that they don't come in behind me. So, let's go over there, set up. All right, so here's another thing as I'm walking up to my area, I always watch for, I don't know if the camera will pick this up well enough or not, but I always watch for the game trail. And the game trail is actually leading right up to where I want to set up. So that gives me good hope.
All right, so the blind is all set up. And now some of you saw that I put some sticks on two of my guy li my lines, right? They're not to camouflage the line and they're not to camouflage the blind. They are for me to remember because you know when your adrenaline starts running, they are to for me to remember that my lines are right there. Don't run into it, Tack. Don't trip and fall. So that's why I put that there. And if I have to leave the blind to, let's say, maybe urinate or something like that, it will help kind of camouflage me if there happened to just be a deer that I didn't see. So let's go inside and take a look. And uh, we will talk about why I set my blind up the way I did, okay? So inside here, I already have my chair set up right there. So my blind has all this netting, but so let, let me tell you, we talked about it on the chat. When you have your windows open, if you have this window open, you do not want to have that window open because the cross lighting while you're moving back and forth and all this stuff, see, it's very visible right so just same thing as when you have your front open you do not want to have the back open now i have everything opened for filming purposes so i could have some lighting okay so let me kind of show you why i set my blind in this angle okay all right so over here on my left you see those two trees right there? Right there. I have seen bucks and does come up that rail that way. So I have a perfect line of sight to shoot, right? And then if they should cross all along here, I will be able to shoot before they get too far. Now I do have these smaller windows right here that I only keep halfway open, okay? Because um, I'm shorter, I'm shorter. So they don't see my movement because my head isn't that high. But, and then I just peek out this one sometimes, you know, I, I don't have this one open because most of the time while scouting, I see them coming out of there, okay? When I come out to set up my blind my tools usually are just the blind whatever i'm gonna sit on the chair i usually do bring a saw just in case something grew up because you know it, it's from year to year right things grow so i bring a saw um and that way nothing is in my line of sight and shooting now the only thing I have a problem with, with this blind, is that the Velcro, right? The Velcro makes noise. Right here, the Velcro, right here, makes noise. So, like I said, this is only for shooting purposes, I mean, video purposes. But normally when I come out early in the morning, or if I'm out here for the evening hunt, I go ahead and take these down to where I am going to shoot my range of shooting is at you know what i mean so when i come out the night before i'll put everything down because the the rest of it is on a hook it doesn't make noise so then i'll just close the hooks back up and we'll be ready to go well folks that um that was pretty easy right i mean uh it doesn't take much and i don't know if you guys can see it right there i mean um, I'll show you a little bit better how well it is kind of camouflaged. I mean, you could still see it because you know it's there. But if you didn't know it was there, I, I, I doubt that you would pick it out that quickly. All right. So all I have is, well, as you're walking away, always look back. So that way middle of the night you're fumbling around or whatever else trying to get there you kind of know where you're going right i mean 
you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't want to be at that far field because there's some trees that look like it. So always kind of look back and look at your outline. You know, don't just think that you're going to be walking that same path because I have walked the same path during the daytime, but I don't always walk the same path um, when it's dark because even though I've hunted here before, I don't always remember exactly where my path was. At nighttime or when it's dark, you know, for your early morning hunt, things will look different. So always kind of take a look back and be like, oh, there, that's my identifying mark, the two trees, that backdrop, all that stuff. Just kind of remember it, but you have to keep looking back because it's going to look different when you're closer to your car. It's going to look different halfway, things like that. But I am going to, I'm not that far away yet, but I'm going to turn around and show you guys. See that? You can kind of make it out, right? You can kind of make it out, but from this distance, doesn't it look like it's almost the base of the tree, right? Until you get closer, then you see it. But right now we're at, hmm, I would say... Uh, 75 to 100 yards. So, you know, when I sit there the night before, I will map out with my rangefinder about how far each thing is. So that way I know where my shots are going. Okay. But like I said, just keep looking back and you won't get lost. Folks, I hope you guys like this video. And if you do, please give me a thumbs up. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel, and folks, may all your adventures be a-okay.